quickly start with uh, um, this today, which is basically uh, finding the charge charge to mass ratio using uh, a deflection tube. Now, if you guys have any uh, questions about anything from the previous lecture, go ahead, okay? Okay, right. Okay, so now deflection tube, you don't need to draw this. Obviously you have the PDF, it's all right. I just want to tell you that this section where you see the electron gun, which is right here, as you can see, what truly really happens is that from a filament, uh, electrons are released. And then when the electrons are released from here, they go in all directions, like they can release, be released in all directions. So cathode, which is like a negative, you know, thing, it's basically made like this. It's like this. So it's a, a opening from where the electron is turned into, you know, a straight line and then anode accelerates it. So it creates it into a beam. This is where it becomes a beam and anode accelerates it. The acceleration of anode depends on the voltage that you supply. And this is basically the main source of, uh, source of energy that we give them so that they get enough kinetic energy. And this is the, uh, the kinetic energy that gives us the selected velocity. And then obviously we can uh, find like uh, in a beam, like electron beam or any other beam starts to come. And then we have a different circuit. We have a cross fields made uh, in this and the cross fields, like the, the magnetic field can be changed by, you know, Helm, Helmholtz coils. They, these are like coils. You don't need to uh, basically understand how. But then the electric field can also be changed using uh, another supply where we can, you know, increase the amount of electric field strength. And we keep on, you know, changing the electric field till the electron beam just goes straight. And when it hits the point where it's uh, undeflected, it means that the magnetic force and the electric force are equal and opposite. Is that clear? Just like we have done it yesterday. All right. Now. So uh, speaking of this, how do we actually find the charge to mass ratio? It's very simple. It basically uh, follows the law of conservation of energy. So first we're going to do that. So from law of conservation of energy, we must understand that we are basically sending it like, um, uh, we are we are we are basically using electrical energy and then this electrical energy is being converted to kinetic energy so electrical energy will be um, is given by basically charge on an electron times voltage that is provided right here and then kinetic energy is given by half mv squared like this okay where uh, this m is the mass of electron so i'm just going to write this here with a different color e is the charge on electron which is basically 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 and m e is the mass of electron so that is 9.11 times 10 to minus 31 for some reason i remember this and this would give you V, which is the selected velocity. All right. Now what you're going to do is you're going to basically, uh, you can change the selection depending on what you need uh, from how much kinetic energy you give. And from that we can basically use, uh, we can find V by multiplying, like we can find V by multiplying two times E times voltage at cathode and anode divided by 
mass of electron and taking an under root so this we, we this is how we can get the velocity and then by using the velocity we can find the um, the electric field strength or you can you know you can find the charge to mass ratio whatever you want to do it because charge to mass ratio is like this right here you can basically use this or um, let's suppose we already know that what the uh, what the basically um, electric field strength and magnetic field strength is so at this point where this is like the cross fields in cross fields region we should understand that basically when it is undeflected undeflected beam uh, means that the electric field strength electric force is equal to the magnetic force and that would mean that it is electric field uh, forces eq and magnetic forces bqv and then q and q will cancel out so the selected velocity v will be equal to electric field strength over b so from here you can basically find the uh, velocity selected all right from here and then you can put this back into this equation and you can find the charge to mass ratio which is right here so that's how you can find you have found you know electrons charge and mass ratio and obviously there are other experiments to find other things as well so this is very simple you just need to you know remember this two equations where um, basically not even the equations you just need to remember this part that we're using law of conservation of energy to find electrical energy and kinetic energy and we're using a for undeflected path of electron beam we're using this kind of you know formula where electric force is equal to the magnetic force is it clear everyone any questions right hello Mokshir, how are you late very bad Fine, okay you can write this down please and then we're going to go forward and check out some questions I'll, I'll, I'll take screenshot okay Okay, should I go forward now? Fair enough. So then we are going to go towards the next sort of experiment, which is basically the fine beam tube. It is uh, very simple as well. So again, you have an electron gun uh, thingy where you are releasing electrons and anode is causing it to go into a beam. And then, then this beam is accelerated via um, anode, right? Cathode makes it into a beam, anode accelerates it because anode is positive, electrons will be like going here. And obviously they will have a velocity, which is the selected velocity where it enters. And then they will move into a uniform field, okay? This uniform field, usually this is, has helium gas. So the electrons will um, basically it will show fizz or bubbles and then it will start going in uh, like circular path or spiral right so it goes like this so you guys need to understand the force would be somewhere and the velocity is perpendicular and from you can check the diameter and radius and stuff and you can obviously find the uh, charge to mass ratio so let's look at that just now so again for this one you will use the same deal you'll say okay i'm going to use the law of conservation of energy because we know that half uh, like uh, electrical energy is going into kinetic so that would mean that this is like the voltage of cathode anode so charge an electron times the voltage supplied to anode cathode will give you half mass of electrons time the velocity right so if you want to find charge to mass you can use e over me this is basically charge to mass ratio and that will be equal to um, 
half times v over vca and to find selected velocity so what you can do is you know that it is going in a circular motion which means that magnetic field magnetic force is is providing the centripetal force in this section okay so magnetic force is bqv and this is mv square over r so v and v square is going to cancel out so you're going to get bq equals to mv over r and from this we can find v which is r v q over m so you can find the radius of the curvature from this side right so you can find the radius of the curvature you can find uh, basically uh, like the mass and then you can put it back to the equation and you can find charge to mass ratio if you want to or you find velocity and use charge to mass ratio from here you can use both of the equations to find charge to the mass ratio okay so like this they like can write charge to mass and uh, using v over rb you can find charge to mass so it's basically very simple just you need to understand whenever there is circular motion you use this equation or this rule and when there is like um, a uh, straight line which is like cross fields you always use electric force equals to magnetic force and that would be it is it clear everyone any questions there <laughs> okay pretty good if you guys have written i would like to move forward Munib Anusha, Ahmed Zaid, where were you? I didn't see you yesterday. And Rafi, where were you? So, so it was a blackout in my the community thing. Yeah. Uh, so I okay. Same for Ahmed Zaid. Ahmed Zaid, are you his neighbor? No, sir. I was traveling. Okay. Munib, aren't you and Ahmed Zaid neighbors? So we live close to each other, we are in the office. Okay, lived in the same street. Okay, very good. All right. So then we are going to look at the same deflection tube. So you have the velocity selector, as you can see, and they've shown you a path and the diameter of that. And then they say that basically the magnetic flux density inside this is like this charge of the whatever the particle is given and the velocity is also given, which is right here. Then says the direction of uniform magnetic field is into the page. So it is like this, okay. And uh, the particle moving vacuum is circular arc of diameter 15. Show that the mass of one particle is 20 U. Okay, that's what they want to do. So basically we're looking for charge to mass ratio, okay. So we already know that because this is this part shown, this part shown, so that would mean that we are going to use which two um, things together. Can you please tell me the relationship between circular path and magnetic field? Yes, please. Go on. Read your notes. So we are saying that force due to magnetic field is equal to the centripetal force, right? So immediately that should come in your mind. And obviously magnetic field is BQV and uh, that is MV square over R and this cancels out this. So, and what are we looking for? We're looking for the mass, right? So mass, let mass be the subject. So it's going to be BQR over V equals to M. Now, what is the magnetic field? That has to be 94 millitesla. Charge is 1.6 times 10 is to minus 19. It's given right here. And this uh, radius, radius is basically the diameter is given. So radius will be half of it, which is 7.5 centimeters. 7.5 times 10 is to minus two. And the velocity, a uh, selected velocity is given as 3.4 times 10 is to four. And then that's gonna be equal to mass. Now, when you do this, I think it's going to be 94 times 10 raised to power minus 3. 
and 1.6 times 10 raised to power minus 19 and 7.5 times 10 raised to power minus 2 divided by 3.4 times 10 raised to power 4 okay so I'm getting something like mass to be 3.318 times 10 raised to power minus 26 kg okay but i need to answer this in 20 u which means that i would like to do it like this 1 u is equivalent to 1.66 times 10 raised to minus 27 kilograms so what will be how many u's will be there when the mass is this much so now you can just cross multiply 3.318 times 10 is to minus 26 divided by 1.66 times 10 is to minus 27 and I think it should be the answer we're looking for 1.66 times 10 is to power minus 27 so it comes out to be 19.98 which is equivalent to 20 u shown any question please let me know four marks for nothing really okay please everybody is clear anusha muneeb rafi dipesh gatika and mokshit and ahmed yes sir yes sir okay then says on figure 8.1 sketch the path in uniform magnetic field of particle 22 having the same charge and speed now obviously the centripetal force is mv square over r right and you know that radius depends on mv over bq we studied previously so we know that if the if the speed is same the magnetic field strength is same the charge is same which means radius is proportional to mass the greater the mass is going to be the greater the radius is going to be which means a heavier particle will take a longer route which means it's going to go here and then it will it might end up here okay and please make a smooth line not like me is it clear everyone like that because heavier would mean greater radius that's it fine then I don't know if I okay fine so then we're gonna move to uh, this sort of field so this is basically the this is basically the deflection tube question okay now in a deflection tube question there will be a cross field and right now in this question it says the particle of charge q and mass m is traveling at constant speed and the particle enters the uniform magnetic field of flux density 9.7 as you can see it says particle charge plus q and mass m has a speed this and the magnetic field of the perpendicular initial velocity perpendicular is out of the plane of the paper which means magnetic field is like out okay like this so if it is out that's good enough and then it says the elect uniform electric field is applied to same region and magnetic field now so first of all we've got to find where the magnetic field is going to be so we have the velocity here the velocity, and i will ask muneeb this because he's the weakest in this muneeb where is your thumb that's what i'm asking is it upwards no 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 Muneeb, that's not fair. Again, place your index finger first towards yourself, which is where the magnetic field is coming out of the page. Can you do that? Okay. Yeah. Where is you? And then you've done it. It's towards you. Index, yeah. index, the first finger. The second finger, which is the middle finger, should be towards the right. Is it towards the right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Then the thumb is down. Down. Thank God. So that means that the force of magnetic means that the force of magnetic field is going to be down is it 
and it's not it means that an opposing electric field should be acting upwards do you understand this would mean that positive charge is attracted by negatives which means negative side should be here and positive should be here do you guys understand now so for two marks what are we going to say we're going to say magnetic field magnetic force downwards due to Fleming's left hand rule okay electric force opposes it upwards so positive attracts negative or you can say repels positive okay hence field goes bottom to top do you guys understand this so you got to write something like this and then it says calculate the magnitude of electric field and show your working now very very simple you guys should understand in the cross field situation if you don't remember this formula v is equal to e over b that's all right because in cross fields i have told you that you're going to write electric field force of electric field equals to force of magnetic field v q v so q and q will cancel out v will be equal to e over b we want to find the electric field strength so we got to multiply v with v so b in this one is 9.7 times 10 raised to minus 2 and the velocity selected was 1.6 times 10 raised to 5 and then just use your calculator all right dipesh do you understand this could you explain this part once again yes so let me find the value first okay it's going to be 1.1.6 1 times 10 raised to power 1 2 4 okay so what we've done is uh, this part b part right you're talking about yes yes sir so in order for anything whenever you see cross fields cross field means there is a magnetic field which is 90 degrees to the electric field do you understand in case of a cross field the magnetic force should be equal to the electric force understood yes now the electric force is given by electric field strength times charge and magnetic force is given by magnetic field flux density times charge times v okay Okay, okay. the charge is same it cancels out so v becomes electric field strength over magnetic field strength so this is the formula that you derive always so you want this so you want to multiply magnetic field with the velocity you have the magnetic field given you have the velocity so you can find it is it clear yes sir, sir. okay have a look Hello Abdul Moiz. Abdul Moiz, why? Why? Why you don't join on time and usually skip classes? That's not good. Because I have other classes. Okay. okay, that's not fair. Are you watching the recordings then? Okay, good. Is it, is it the class being recorded? Yes, it is recorded. Always. Okay. Then I told you to watch the, you know, the recording link, the play playlist. In that playlist, every recording is there. Is it clear? You can catch yes. it. All right. So then, okay. So then, 
we're going to go to the next part. Now it says the electric field is now removed, so the positively charged particle follows a curved path. In the magnetic field, the path of an arc radius of this. So what it's saying is that if this is the field where the path was, so the charged particle has entered like this, okay, and now it follows a curved path like this, okay. And in this curved path situation, it says the radius of this circle, whatever the circle is, wait a second, let me create a nice circle. So it says the radius of this circle is 4.0 centimeter. And uh, calculate for the charge particle, the ratio of charge over mass. Okay. Now we know in a centripetal situation, when it's circular motion, which two forces are you supposed to put against? Can somebody please tell me that? Magnetic force is equal to force. Yes, very good. Which means magnetic force was BQV and centripetal force was MV square over R. So V and V square cancels out. What do we need? We need charge to mass, which means that we need to take B on the other side. So it'd be B over BR. You guys understand this? Now the speed was already given 1.6 times 10 is to 5. The magnetic field was 9.7 times 10 is to minus 2. I hope I'm not wrong. Yes. And the radius was 0 0.04 because I need to change it into meters. Okay. All of this was in SI units. So when you do that, so that would give me something like 4.1 times 10 raised to power 7. Like that, simple as that. And then it says the particle has a charge of 3E, where E is the elementary charge. Use your answer in C to determine the mass in U. So that's pretty easy. So our charge to mass ratio is right now 4.1 times 10 raised to 7. The charge in this is 3E, which is basically uh, 1E is like 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19. So I'm going to write 3 times 1.6 times 10 raised to minus 19 divided by m equals to 4.1 times 10 raised to 7. So mass is going to be when I divide 4.1 um, onto that. Okay, so 3 times 1.6 times 10 raised to power minus 19. Uh oh. And then we're going to divide this by 4.1 times 10 raised to power. Seven, and that gives me about value of mass as 1.17 times 10 raised to our minus 26 kilograms again if I want to change into u I would say 1 u is equal to 1.66 times 10 raised to minus 27 kilograms so I want to find how many u's will be in 1.17 times 10 raised to minus 26 so you cross multiply, x will be 1.17 times 10 raised to minus 26 divided by 1.66 times 10 raised to minus 27. So answer divided by 1.66 10 raised to power minus 27. And that is like 7.1 u. Okay, that's it. So that would be pretty easy. Then says the particle is a nucleus of an atom. State the number of protons and number of neutrons in this. Oh, okay. Interesting, huh? So mass U means that this particle has seven U mass and three E charge. That would mean that it has three protons and three seven minus three will be four. So this is AS, but I don't know, four neutrons. Is it clear, everyone?
okay then any questions have a look at it please So then we are going to move to the next thing. This I want you to do it on your on your own because this is a very similar question. You already know how to do it. It's pretty easy and and then I've given you a lot of practice questions as well. So you guys can practice this on your own and when you are doing this let me know uh, if you are having trouble with any of these and obviously we can you know work on it. Okay, so uh, now I just want to, you know, uh, do a paper five, quick paper five question. Last time I remember, who said I he wants to do like a review of question one again? Somebody said, I don't remember who. Mokshit, that was you? Yes, I do. Okay, so, so let's take out any random paper and like uh, specifically I, I meant question one how to write the procedure yeah yeah we'll do it again yes Gatika. so can you solve this question number 22 the this one that i the, the screen is showing yes okay i'll do that this starts from here right okay So first it says define magnetic flux density so that you should be like doing on your own because you just need to do like uh, B, uh, F equals to BIL so F over IL just explain that it is the ratio of force over the current in per unit length right so you will be able to do it and you should remember that the force and the current and the um, uh, and the magnetic field are 90 degrees to each other so that should be it but the real question basically starts from here so you can do that on your own it says newton meters there and there are 40 turns and there are five and three as you can see okay then it says that um, in the vertical sides of coil have length and horizontal sides have length this and what else and then it says that uh, a u-shaped magnet rests on top of the balance that is okay what kind of thing is this okay and then it says that the u-shaped magnet rests on top of balance that is set to treating to zero the low edge of the coil is lowered into the balance and the poles of u-shaped magnet blah 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 okay so what it's saying is that there was a u-shaped magnet like this like this and then it rests on some balance and the weight of this is like cancelled out by making it zero and then the coil is like lowered into it like this okay so vertically like this you only see the coil anyway so then it's a, oh they've already drawn this thank god okay so they've given this and they say the newton meter initial reading is five zero point five six three okay well i don't know and then it says you gotta find like um, uh, then it says you gotta find explain why the current causes the vertical force to act on the coil okay so the vertical force basically is sort of you know here because um, you guys can see that uh, here the magnetic field is going to interact wherever the poles are with the current in the perpendicular direction and obviously that would cause the force on the coil okay Gatika, will you be able to write this at least yes okay fine so then you have um, you know um, yeah so then you have the next question which says determine three significant figures the flux density of uniform magnetic field okay so we have this coil which is hanging and obviously 
the magnetic field is either into the page from here or something like that this side of the coil is i think given by sort of three centimeter with three centimeter and this side of the coil is given by i think five centimeter okay and then newton meter is hanging because of this the weight of this uh, is given right they have given the weight or no the initial reading u shape magnet the magnet said the lower edge of the coil is lowered into region between poles u shape as shown the initial reading on the newton meter was 5 but so basically the initial reading means that this has to be the weight of uh, the ring right okay then um, then you got to understand that they are talking about okay fine so a uh, magnetic field it will be force equals to b i l uh, and the new reading they have given the new reading i don't know the initial reading is this and the new reading the current passes and the, this causes the reading on top band balance to change to 2.6 grams so it means that this magnet must be pushed downwards right so magnetic force is equal to uh, 2.16 grams times uh, 10 raised to the minus 3 so that's going to be i think 0 0.00216 kilograms multiplied by 9.81 can you please find this gatika So this would be the magnetic force. So the magnetic force we have two one two. Okay. Two one two. Okay. So this is the magnetic force zero point two one two, and obviously we want to find the magnetic flux density. So for that we are going to use uh, the b times the current current was going as 3.94 and the length was actually uh, we're going to take this length which is perpendicular to the field because this is parallel to the field right so three centimeter you got to change into meter and then i remember there were number of turns so it said 40 turns which means we also have the length is like 40 times okay can you find b please now okay so that would be the magnetic field flux density strength and then it says determine what is now the reading on newton meter explain your reasoning so because you guys need to understand if the magnet is being pushed downwards the magnet will apply the same amount of force because of uh, newton's third law right that would mean that we need to explain it like this force on magnet will be equal to force by magnet on the coil okay uh, by newton's third law okay so that means that on the ring now you have force upwards of 0 0.212 newtons and the weight of the magnet was already the weight of the coil was somewhat like what was the weight 0 0.563 so the force will be weight minus magnetic force which is 0 0.563 minus 0 0.212 what you get So that should be your answer. Please. Is the the from the because they're opposite, right? The force on the coil is upwards because of the magnet, but the weight is downwards. So I had to subtract to find the resultant force on that. You get it? Okay, okay, yeah. Hmm. So do try this question, you guys, as well. Yes. Okay, 
everything is clear do try this on your own as well because obviously this is the newest paper that you can find and if you don't still get it do let me know i will help you again and make sure that you complete this and submit it so i'm going to make an assignment here and then we're going to start with paper five today so yeah wait so i go to classwork and please submit magnetism on this and i think it would be fair enough if you submit it by friday at least okay Saturday, okay, Saturday. We can do it on Saturday, fine. Tomorrow we will start with induction and now let's look at what we can get. So um, we are currently, we did specimen, so we're gonna do something else. Pass. October, November 22. Okay, October, November 22, where's that? 9702 2022 papers wait gc kite right june and oh they have winter winter 5 2 or i don't know let's do 5 1 don't worry it doesn't really matter okay so uh, right now we are